Wait a second time. I'll call the member for Balmain. Thank you very much, Madam Temporary Speaker. Well, it's been a very interesting debate this morning. We've heard incredibly strong arguments from the opposition as to why this bill is faulty, uh, it's poorly uh, developed, why it attacks fundamental rights, why it, uh, it waters down the bedrock of our justice system, the presumption of innocence. We've learnt about how it trashes judicial expertise. But the opposition will be essentially waving this bill through. It's quite remarkable. It's quite remarkable that members can stand up here and rip into the government describing how flawed this bill is, yet not oppose it. What we need to see from the opposition and obviously from the government is a rethink of how this bill has been addressed. Uh, obviously, I'll be uh, placing most of my comments on the government's bill, but I just find it quite remarkable. I just find it quite remarkable that Labor can come to this place, uh, criticise the bill and say how weak the government is and how poor the government is in terms of developing this bill and how it's all about reactionary media and then vote for it. It's quite incredible because the truth is they don't have the guts to stand up to the reactionary media in the same way the government doesn't have the guts to stand up to the reactionary media. It's just quite incredible. But, Madam Temporary Speaker, if I can go to the heart of the bill, it's clear that opposition members have uh, creditably and well raised the unacceptable and poor policy process. Um, the government's decision to respond to what is, quite frankly, a narrow section of the media and prematurely review the Act is a significant problem. It's flawed, it's inappropriate, and it, uh, it, it fails to address the evidence. And surely, Madam Temporary Speaker, addressing the evidence in matters as sensitive and as complex and as detailed and uh, resource-intensive as this is something that's very important. The Bail Act was a product of over one year's work by the Law Reform Commission. It wasn't something that uh, the former Attorney General John Hasistogos pulled out of his hat after calling a few people on the phone. Uh, it was a significant work by eminently qualified experts. Uh, because the Law Reform Commission had been tasked in 2001, uh, 2011 with improving upon the 1978 Act, which was quite frankly unworkable due to the piecemeal amendments. And it's clear that um, the unanimous passing with myself, with no independent, uh, with no politician of any party voting against it, was clear that this had a great deal of support. And there was a significant period of time, 12 months or so, when there was a great deal of work undertaken to uh, implement new systems, procedures, to train people, to adapt software and so on, and uh, came into force on the 20th of May. And of course the Attorney General, the, the new Attorney General, uh, uh, Minister Hazard, actually originally defended the Act, defended um, the initial response, the media uh, you know, hubbub, defended that in the Daily Telegraph on the 19th of the 6th, 2014, uh, said quite clearly that there needed to be a calm and intelligent defence, and, and that was what he put forward. It needs to be monitored over a period of time, a longer period before making any assessment of its uh, operation. He noted that a group including the police and the Attorney General's Department have been set up to do just that. But then, obviously, something happened, Madam Temporary Speaker. Uh, and the Attorney General uh, um, uh, did not make the announcement. The Premier, in fact, made the announcement that just only after five weeks after that came into effect, the Premier announced the review, supposedly because the Act wasn't protecting the community as much as been intended. And uh, four weeks to review the Act it is quite unsatisfactory, Madam Temporary Speaker. It's a lot better with the Training Act. Three years ago, it worked well. And, um, well, I know that um, the Minister Hazard is saying that he, uh, he felt like he wasn't able to get the Training Act through. Yeah. In th uh, the, 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 uh, the Act in three years, and of course that, that goes to the problems that were proposed by the government when it came to that Act. Good laws shouldn't pass, and that's what happened on that case. Madam Temporary Speaker, uh, it's pretty clear that these changes, as have been outlined by Australian for Lawyers for Human Rights, uh, the Law Reform, uh, sorry, the New South Wales Council for Civil Liberties, uh, Civil Liberties and others that have been addressed by the member for Liverpool, um, we know the Australian lawyers for human rights, uh, Nathan Kennedy, has said quite clearly, quote, the changes would undermine the basic common law presumption of innocence. And that is at the heart of this matter, Madam Temporary Speaker. If the state seeks to imprison somebody, there should be the presumption of innocence. And in this case, there should uh, the imprisonment, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the denial of liberty is something which is so important that it shouldn't be subject to this four-week uh, tinkering at the edge process which has led to, which will take New South Wales back to a hybrid scheme 
where statutory presumptions rather than the best evidence will often determine if bail is granted or refused. The proposed changes will seal bail conditions based on the alleged offence that was committed rather than addressing the actual risk proposed by the accused. And quite frankly, uh, I can't see, and we Greens can't see this, uh, making New South Wales safer. I also note Australian Lawyers for Human Rights have highlighted, quote, it's important to remember that a person who is on bail or remanded before trial has not been convicted of any offence. Indeed, nearly half of all people who are charged with an offence are ultimately acquitted. Ultimately acquitted, Madam Temporary Speaker. And I go on to quote, whilst the criminal justice system must recognise situations where pre-told detention is justified, these reforms are not reasonable because they do not allow the courts to assess the risks of granting bail based on the circumstances of the offence. They instead introduce arbitrary provisions dealing with all crimes in certain categories in the same way, irrespective of the facts of the case. This will potentially see innocent people spending long times, uh, long periods on remand awaiting trial and significantly increase the pressure on our already overburned prison system. Uh, Madam Temporary Speaker, uh, it's clear that our prison system is already overburdened and the member for Liverpool has highlighted what is the cost and of course that remains to be, to be understood by this government. Uh, I note the Council for Civil Liberties have outlined clear and consistent objections to the bill, uh, and they say, quote, then the effect will be to graft onto a coherent, unified, clearly grounded and eminently workable system under the 2013 Act a number of qualifications of the kind that wrecked the original 1978 Act and eventually necessitated the review. Uh, Madam Speaker, it's clear that the amendments are harmful to the rights of citizens and should be opposed. The regulation of presumption of innocence and the general right to liberty uh, in the preamble is obviously inadequate. The presumption of innocence and the general right to liberty should remain a specified consideration in the body of the legislation. Uh, it's clear, as a member for Liverpool identified, there are some technical issues that the government has not adequately addressed, and those matters need to be uh, addressed by the, the attorney in his reply in order to have this matter uh, understood before there is a clear uh, introduction of this bill. Because as um, the attorney's uh, uh, secondary speech on this indicated, there will be a time, uh, there will be some time which will be needed to implement these changes again, piecemeal um, attacks on what is in fact good quality legislation, might not be perfect, but what is in fact good quality legislation. Uh, it's clear, Madam Speaker, that the proposed changes do take the Bail Act 10 years. Um, this complex, this technical, the unprincipled scheme where the presumption of innocence is um, largely lost. It's an ongoing problem in New South Wales politics, and I don't think it's any surprise that um, the former attorney, John Hasistagos, was brought in, um, because it's obviously compromised Labor's opposition to this issue, um, and uh, it's ensured that someone who was one of the most problematic when it comes to the law and order auction uh, had a very short period of time to uh, address these matters and, quite frankly, came up with proposals which don't meet the test, the test of evidence, which don't meet the test of the defence of our fundamental rights, and which don't meet the tests of reduced complexity and clarity when it comes to our legislative basis for our judicial system. So, Madam Temporary Speaker, uh, it's clear that this will be supported by uh, the government and the opposition. And again, can I conclude by just saying how remarkable it is that the opposition, the Labor Party, can stand up here and give very good speeches, which are in fact quite detailed and based on principle, and say how against they are this bill, and then vote for it, and hide behind this tissue of defence, which is, well, we're not opposing it. Well, that means they're voting for it, because the Greens will, uh, will not be supporting the upper house, and uh, if Labor also opposed it, uh, there'd be an opportunity for some negotiation to see whether or not we can improve the bill as it stands. But I wanted to um, take this opportunity to uh, put on the record those issues outlined by those groups. I understand, Madam Temporary Speaker, this is a devilish, uh, com devilishly complex area, um, and it's, it's a very difficult process to try and resolve. And that's why uh, there was a thorough review undertaken. That's why almost a year of uh, implementation, uh, pre-implementation work was done. And that's why, in our view, it should take more than a few, uh, a few short months before we amend the bill and we examine the evidence to see how se severe, uh, indeed, any impacts are. Thank you. Thank you. The question